You've got all these trees, and then all of a sudden it breaks through, and you see something that you completely don't expect to see here. There's no mystery as to what these are. They're two great, big satellite dishes. They have clearly been sitting there in the weather and not being used for some time. Built at great expense, what is unclear is the exact purpose of this facility. Cold white walls, no windows, air vents, these two great big dishes on top, surrounded by fencing. It's like some sort of villain's lair. When you get inside, you can see they've been stripped pretty bare. Any valuable equipment was taken away long ago. Now it's just kind of a hodgepodge of junk. There's stacks of wooden chairs. There's even an old refrigerator. Once occupied by brilliant scientists, this complex was engaged in the search for something extraordinary beyond planet Earth. There was a moment when we thought we had proof that something was out there, and this complex was at the center of that story. When these structures were built in 1976, it was called the Woodbury Earth Station. It was built by AT&T, the giant telecoms company. In the 1970s, the telephone industry was going through a revolution. It was becoming feasible to send all kinds of data, including telephone calls, up to satellites in orbit. So AT&T built these two dishes to serve as an uplink and downlink for this satellite phone transmission system. The unique landscape here made it perfect for the Earth station. Scott Harris is a planetary geologist who has investigated its extraterrestrial origins. Well, we're in this unique depression called the Cove. My colleagues and I have been researching this site for about 20 years, looking at the possibility that these radio telescopes actually sit in the middle of an ancient impact structure. This Cove Dome crater appears to be the remnants of a large meteor strike. Whatever hit this hit it hard enough to pulverize rock, even melt the rock, and then leave that crater ring around the side. There's no coincidence that these dishes are in the middle of that crater because the deep depression, about 300 feet deep, provides a radio and microwave-free zone. You could build your big dishes here, and they'd have very little interference from surrounding electromagnetic sources. But Woodbury Earth Station service would be short-lived. The thing about satellite technology is it changes so rapidly. So by 1980, just a few years after they'd built it, AT&T retired this facility and abandoned it. But that was not the end of the story here. Far from it. Soon, these giant dishes would be involved in a close call, something truly out of this world. Paul Steffes is a former NASA scientist and was on the ground when the Woodbury site was at the center of this close call. Our team leader always kept a bottle of champagne in her refrigerator. After this detection was made, uh, they made sure the bottle was still there in full. In 1996, Paul wasn't working for NASA, but an independent organization known as SETI. This was an organization that originally had been funded by the American federal government. Their funding gets cut, and they become a nonprofit. Their mission is to find evidence of extraterrestrial intelligence by searching space for signs that something is out there. And Woodbury would play a key role in their latest search, Project Phoenix. We operated as part of the Project Phoenix of the SETI Institute from 1996 all the way through the year 2000. Project Phoenix was a successor to a NASA program of searching the skies for artificial signals emanated by foreign or rather distant civilizations. Why would you want to use a radio telescope to look for intelligent life? Well, the theory is that if some intelligent civilization developed anything like humans did, at some stage, they might invent something like radio or something like television, be beaming signals around their planet. So that's what they started looking for. SETI had big plans for the Woodbury Earth Station, but it had not been built to scour the heavens for signs of life. The requirement for the SETI program to be able to point precisely at given targets 
was far in excess of the previous pointing capability of this facility. In 1996, SETI provided a million dollars to upgrade one of the dishes so it could become part of Project Phoenix. They put in a new motor, they took out an old stairway, uh, and they put in a new flexible cable carrier uh, called the Twister. The horn that we installed on the center of the southern dish on this facility was built so that we could monitor signals over a wide range of frequencies. When the upgrades were complete, it was renamed the Woodbury Research Facility. It would provide follow-up detection for another SETI station in Greenbank, West Virginia. So having this device, which we called a FUD, follow-up detection device, was the key for being able to quickly scan the skies and excise any radio frequency interference. If you watch the movie Contact, after their detection of a signal, Jodie Foster kisses the screen and says, thank you, Elmer. And of course, the software that ran the FUD was named Elmer. Woodbury was essential to making sure that any signals from one facility could be immediately verified by the other. They were there to double check, to confirm signals identified as alien. Less than a year later, SETI made contact. Woodbury's sister facility got a signal that looked really distinct. This might be the greatest scientific breakthrough in human history. In 1997, scientists from the Search for Extraterrestrial Intelligence, or SETI, were using the Woodbury Research Facility to support their search for alien civilizations. At 6 a.m. on June 23rd, they made contact. They were scanning a star named YZ SETI, about 12 light years away from our sun, when they started to hear something that they thought might be promising. So this really looked like it might be the big one. Being in that room, in that moment, you'd go crazy with excitement. They needed to use Woodbury to check that the signal was genuine. But disaster had struck. It was offline. About a week and a half before the close call, um, a lightning storm struck the dish and caused damage to one of the receivers that was used to monitor for uh, Project Phoenix. So as a result, uh, we were unable to run the follow-up detection device those days. So the dish was down. It wasn't available to confirm this possible sighting of an alien intelligence. The researchers were biting their nails. They were trying to figure out how they could confirm it. While Paul's colleagues were prepping the champagne glasses, he had to catch a flight to SETI headquarters in California. This gave him some time to think. As I was flying on the plane, I had with me a paper copy of all of the spacecraft that we had in our database. And the more I looked, the more I realized that this specific frequency corresponded to one that had been assigned to a satellite called SOHO. SOHO was a deep space explorer designed to monitor the sun. The SETI telescopes were pointed into deep space, and on its orbit around the sun, the SOHO satellite had crossed their path. The signal was being made by intelligent life. Unfortunately, it was us. Of course, if, if Woodbury had been online at that moment in time, this would all very quickly have been squashed, but they weren't there at the moment that they were needed. SETI continued to operate the Woodbury Research Facility until 2000, when technological innovations outpaced this site once again. It has remained dormant ever since, silently watching the skies. Today, although SETI has left Woodbury behind, they remain committed to searching the universe for intelligent life. After all these years, SETI is still at it. They have a new project called Breakthrough Listen, where they are continuing to search for any kind of sign that we're not alone, that there's someone else out there. The legacy of Woodbury is that it shows if we don't look 
for this extraterrestrial intelligence. We'll never find it. I think we should cast our eyes to the heavens and keep on searching. You know what? I do think the truth is out there.